שלום. שלום. Hey, Shalom out there. Shalom. It's the brothers of Great Millstone Charlotte back at you with another live lesson through the spirit, power, and mercy of Yahweh Bashi and Shai. Before we get started with this live lesson, as always, we want to give all praises, honor, and glory unto Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai, Bashem, Rakak, Wadash. Double honors, as always, to our apostles, our elders of Great Millstone that taught us the truth and that do rule well. Peace, blessings, and mercy to the house of David, Habayaf, Dawadah, the hopeful elect. All right, to you we say shalom. Shalom. All right, it's the brothers of Great Millstone Charlotte once again. Brother Itazam, Mom Gabar, with me. I'm on Aria. Kind of. We just wanted to come at the body with a uh, quick lesson um, on Proverbs, the 12th chapter. All right, me and the brother, we've been just, uh, you know, having, you know, our holy conversations, you know, as us brothers do when we get together and we fellowship. And, um, you know, this chapter is heavy because it really shows the, the, the differences, the correlation and uh, the perils between the righteous and wicked. Mm -hmm. Right. And it's evident when you look at today's world that this is more and more, more and more clear. Right. That they're feeding off of the vibration of wicked vices right. and devices as opposed to a moral compass of righteousness, All right? And if I can add to you, this is more evident to show you why the, the wisdom of the Lord is needed in the world. Because the people of this, of this world operate off of the vibration of wickedness, which well, as we go through this chapter, you're gonna see the parallels between the decision-making of the two, which is why the Lord, as it said, I, I'll get that real quick. Deuteronomy chapter 30, 30, 30 and 15. I have set before thee this day life and good and death and evil, in that I command thee this day to love the Lord thy power, to walk in his ways, and to keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgments, that they may as live and multiply, and the Lord thy power shall bless thee in the land whither thou goest to possess it. And all right, in the, in the ways of life and death, good and evil, they all hinge on righteousness and wickedness, man. Yep. So if you walk in the ways of righteousness, which is the ways of life and good, then you shall have good success. But if you walk in the ways of wickedness, which is you know the darkness and evil then you will find yourself in straits and ultimately be destroyed, man. You know? So the Lord put that decision out in front of us, but he threw water to the uh to the Lord for the Holy Spirit to give us the ability to tap into this uh to this righteous wisdom to make these good decisions what's gonna to lead to our salvation, man. God. Yep. Matter of fact, if I could also add to that point, mm -hmm. you know, the <clears throat> ability to know right from wrong, the importance of understanding your decisions your actions, which have reactions, yep. right? And to know how to move accordingly. This is uh, 1 Kings 2 and 3. And keep the charge of the Lord, Yahweh, thy power, to walk in his ways, to keep his statutes and his commandments and his judgments and his testimonies, as it is written in the law of Moses, that thou mayest prosper in all that thou doest and whithersoever thou turnest thyself, mm. you know? And as the brother priest Amuan had just pointed out, Right. The ability to know, you know, how to make the proper decisions. Right. Because this is what your enemies, you know, they sought to destroy you. And what did they do? They made sure pursuant to Proverbs or Psalms, the 83rd chapter, to make sure that the name of Israel was of no remembrance any longer. Mm -hmm. You know, and what is that? The standard. Yep. Right. The moral compass that comes with being an Israelite. Right. As Elder Yasha Wamba went into the lesson uh, this week, right, of how being an Israelite is a responsibility. It is. There's a standard. There's a moral. There's a moral compass and vibration that we're to push forth on the planet Earth. Mm -hmm. But your enemies, they went so far as to try and sever that tie, so that you can just be immersed 
and constant wickedness. That's why our people don't prosper. Right. You know, they then, don't know the right way. And then to add to that point, when you find yourself trying to walk in a, in a way that's good to the Lord, you're vilified for it because the world has been conditioned to the vibration of wickedness, man. Mm -hmm. You know, let me get that real quick. Isaiah 59 and 15. Yea, true faileth, and he had departed from evil, making himself a prey. Mm -hmm. And the Lord saw it, and it displeased him that there was no judgment. Yep. God, if you read from top level, yeah. sir. Isaiah 59 and 15. Yea, true faileth. Right, true faileth in this land, man. Hmm. Matter of fact, let me go over the verse. God. Uh, verse 14. And judgment is turned away backward, and justice standeth afar off. For truth is fallen in the street, and, in it, and equity cannot enter. Right. This is a this is an unjust kingdom, man. The rulers are unjust. The judgments are unjust. Right. The the the, the truth of how things are to, are how things are to be handled according to righteousness are casted away in this land, man. It's at complete odds with the truth. Okay. Because the pillars of Edomite supremacy are what lies, treachery, deceit. Mm -hmm. So. If he came into power like that, best believe that's how his governance is going to be. And we see it to this day, regardless of what you two third niggas think of. Oh, America can be can become much greater than the past that is had. No, the past is how you get to know where you are today. That's right. It's the building blocks of where you are today, which is the building blocks of America, which is why this this system is deep rooted in lies, deceptions, treachery. All curtailed primarily to destroy and engulf you Israelites, man. Yeah, so it's it's done on purpose to why all the ways that are uh, are proven to destroy us that they're they're uh, pushed here, man. That's right. You know. Continuing on, verse fifteen: Yea, truth faileth, and he that departed from evil, making himself a prey. Right, truth faileth in America, man. Right, there's no truth in the land. These niggas are still gun ho about these lies that they built their life, they built their 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 legacy upon. Right? It, even though we live in the age of information where you can literally search up a Google article and it'll break down all the lies and treacheries that these Edomites have established. God. Right? But that's because the truth failed in the land until the prophets were raised, starting wow. with our head elders, our head elders and apostles on down. And when you look up this word, uh, Faleth, it goes back to the Hebrew word, Adar, H5737. Uh, it says, to be lacking, to fail, to leave lacking. Mm -hmm. To leave lacking, right? And what were we lacking? The understanding, the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, right? We're lacking the, the good way, man, the, mm -hmm. uh, the, the prosperous way. Like it tells you in the book of Joshua, chapter 1, verse uh. I believe it's either eight or nine, where it says that uh, you're supposed to meditate on these words day and night, and in the end you will have a uh, good success, you know. And what's that good success ultimately lead to? Salvation. But while we're still here having to endure our time here in Babylon, taking heed to the words of the Lord helps lead you to, you know, uh, 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 good things that the Lord provides you with. Okay. Yep. A roof over your head. You know, food in your stomach, man. Uh, a stable uh, income of living. You know, the blessings of the Lord ultimately, man. Because mm -hmm. the more and more that you dwell with Sophia, all right, the more that you grow and become accustomed to walking in the good way, man. Right. You know, this is good for you. You shouldn't be adapting yourself to the mindset of the masses of the people. They still under a spell. And hey, what's that say in uh in the, in the book of Matthew? The uh, broad is the way to live to destruction. Yep, and many that be that go with them. That's why another scripture, you know, just in the law, following our multitude to do evil, man. That's right. So you see the world going one way, you're supposed to go the other, man. Exactly. Because the world is accustomed to doing evil, man. All right, the wickedness is in. But we're at a point to where wickedness is on its way out, or righteousness is coming in the, in the style now, man. That's right. You know, and so with everybody seeing that, we're, we're becoming uh, standouts. For walking in, in that way, and how the world looks at us, you know, like what the fuck are these niggas doing? You know, they they're out here condemning the nasty people. They don't eat certain foods that taste that that taste amazing to them. Right. You know, they don't do certain actions that the world does. Like yo, these niggas different. Mm -hmm. But there's nothing wrong with being different, man. You know, it, it was a point in time, 
you know, back in the day, way being different was looked at as a good thing. Yeah. But now you different. That's like, yo, nigga, you was like, yo, let's you can get the side out. Like, yo, what do I just do, man? Yeah. You know? But that's about that's what it comes down to. Our nation was a holy people, holy meaning separate. So we were always different from the get go. Yeah. And that's the steed that we're coming back into. Was was our Lord and Savior? Was he not looked at as different when he was on the earth? Mm hmm. Who do you think this dude he is? Man, who, who he think he is, man? It's the carpenter's son, man. Who are you gonna tell us he's only 33? You know, at the time he was 12 in the uh in the temple, you know, confounding the, the uh the scribes and the Pharisees back then. So when he got to 33, you know, I was like, yo, this dude talk about he he knew our fathers before and all this. Like, yo, what's this dude talk about, man? That's the, that's the type of situation we find ourselves in because hey, most of us were young men, you know. Out there confounding these, these these people that didn't claim to know the Bible their whole life, man. You know, but they don't walk in the ways of, of righteousness, man. So let me finish this out. It says, mm -hmm. "Yeah, true faileth, and he that departed from evil, making himself a prey." Right, because as the brother priest on the has said, right, wickedness is in. Right, to so this world, everyone operates and wins if you play the game according to wickedness. Bro, it's a saying in the world. They said you ain't. If you ain't sinning, you ain't winning. Or you ain't winning if you sin. Something like, yeah, you, you ain't winning unless you sin, you know? So it says, and the Lord saw it, and it displeased him that there was no judgment. Mm -hmm. The Lord is displeased with this this rulership, man. Right? Why? Because it's not it's not guided by the moral the moral virtues of the law, statutes, and commandments, which we're gonna go into. You know, mm -hmm. further with Proverbs, the 12th chapter, because these correlations between the righteous and wicked, right? The things that the Most High uh, finds pleasing and displeasing, you know, is going to be addressed. And we'll find those parallels to the kingdom that we hope for, mm -hmm. right? Versus this kingdom that's being demolished in the spirit. And we can understand why it's being demolished in the spirit, man. Yep. So this is Proverbs chapter 12, verse 1. Whoso loveth instruction, loveth knowledge, but he that hateth reproof is brutish. Right, and that's these people in America today, right? They can't be corrected. They can't be told right from wrong. You know, it's just that foul spirit of do as thou wilt. Mm -hmm. I, am, I am able to do and say whatever the fuck I please, and for you to try and correct me, you're not in you're not in any position to do so that's that's what the scripture said is brutish yeah right and uh just gets in the gmt it says any who love knowledge want to be told when they're wrong mm -hmm. right because you seek out knowledge you want to know yeah right? because if you veer from the path as we know according to second uh second ezra seven it talks about this path being so narrow that only one man can enter in at, at a time. And on one side is fire, and on one side is water, which indicate that a one wrong step can lead to your destruction. You would think you would want somebody to let you know when you're going off, man. You know, but these people are so proud in their wickedness to where they don't want to know, you know, when they're when they're uh, going off, man. This is where the the whole uh, only God can judge me. That's that's the first thing that these people say. Who are you? Only God can judge me, man. But the scriptures tell you that hey, we, we can judge me, a judge, because we are judging according to the spirit, man. We don't judge according to the flesh, man, according to appearance, which is a stupid thing to say anyway, because you people make judgments every day. You make a judgment when you put on your clothes and when you decide what you want to wear today, man. You know? Yep. So it says it is stupid to hate being corrected. And that shows you the vast majority of these people are stupid because they don't want to, like you said, they don't want to take accountability. In their wrongdoing, man. Especially you women, man. Y'all the main ones. You and Esau are allergic to fucking uh, uh accountability, man. Kryptonite. That's their biggest form of kryptonite, man. You know, so continuing on, verse two, back in the King James. A good man obtains the favor of the Lord, but a man of wicked devices will he condemn. Mm -hmm. A man shall not be established by wickedness. But the root of the righteous shall not be moved. Mm -hmm. And that's why we see America, ultimately Esau's kingdom, you know, falling. Because as it says, a man shall not be established by wickedness. And how was this place established? 
by wickedness, man. So it's that root, that, that malignant root that Esau pretty much had put in the earth, the Lord is uprooting now, man. All right, that cancerous cell that is that is played in the whole world, man. The most high is getting it out of here, man. Because we see in the byproduct of what wickedness, you know, has done to the world, man. It's spread. All right. It sunk its roots into the world and it has spread. And now everybody's infected by wickedness, man. Okay. And so the Lord has to bring that that correction agent via the, the, the true position, which is Yahweh Shai, to uproot this war, man. You know? You got a quick precept to go mm -hmm. along with that. Psalms 127 and 1. Except the Lord Yahweh build the house, they labor in vain that build it. Mm. Except the Lord Yahweh keep the city, the watchman waketh but in vain. You know? So again, as we've been reading, right, this this system that's been established under wickedness, this isn't built by the Most High. No, at all. Right? Esau was given the ability to govern the earth due to the promise that he received going all the way back to his father Isaac. Right. But he was not promised an eternal rulership and eternal dominion was promised unto Jacob. Why? Because Jacob was given that covenant. Right. It was passed down through the loins of Abraham to Isaac unto Jacob and to his descendants, the 12 tribes of Israel who were given the zeal of the most high. Right. The ones that were afforded the covenant. No other nation. Their nation is to be an eternal kingdom, not the Edomite, because. Your ways are contrary to existence itself, man. Your 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 wickedness that you promote that has gotten progressively worse throughout history is the exact reason why your downfall is coming upon you swiftly. Right. If I can give you an example of that, mm -hmm. how was Esau able to come in and obtain everything that he had? He got by the sword, right? He established that wickedness and he backed it up by that sword. So this is Matthew 26 and 52. Then said Yahweh unto him, Put up again thy sword into his place, for all they that take the sword shall perish with the sword. So Esau was able to get, you know, uh, uh, everything by the sword. And he, so therefore, he's going to die by the sword. That's that saying that they have in the world. You live by the sword, you die by the sword, man. You yep. know? Because Yahweh Shai, when he was speaking this, he was talking, I believe it was Peter, that had uh, cut the uh, the servant's ear off that, that had came to apprehend Yahweh Shai. Yep. And then the Lord healed him and said this, but you can apply this to Esau, man. Because that, that's how he, he does everything, man. All right. Take, it says he take his lands by violence, by that sword, man. So therefore, he's going to die by that sword when the other nations all right, shoot their version of their sword, which is the nuclear missile over here, to destroy Esau's uh, hegemony, man. That's right. So continuing on back in uh, Proverbs 12 and 3, mm -hmm. a, a man shall not be established by wickedness, but the righteous, sorry, but the root of the righteous shall not be moved mm -hmm. because they that root is ultimately your house shy man that that's that everlasting kingdom that is that is uh being established right now through the prophets man okay that's that uh that tried stone that foundation man verse four a virtuous woman is a crown to her husband but she that make it ashamed is as rottenness in his bones mm -hmm. right and we see a prime example the situation happening with uh kiki palmer right right here it is you know her, her man doesn't want her to go out dressing like a whore to be seen and flaunted on the internet mm -hmm. and motherfuckers is backing her up gassing her up right and embarrassing this individual mm -hmm. right embarrassing him you know calling him a weirdo toxic masculinity all type of madness man right but this is the cult. This is these are just a, that's just a byproduct of the Edomite hegemony, man. Right. Because here it is, you you at an Usher concert with your cheeks all out, and you're like a couple months removed from just giving birth, man. So like like her husband was trying to state, you know, when he commented on the on the, the picture that she took when with her ass out, he was like, yo, you a whole you're a, a mother. You know, like you have a, you have a man at home and you have kids here. Like, why are you taking pictures like that? And he's being bad, like he's in the wrong man. But that's the byproduct of you know uh, living here in the Babylon. Because I get to the uh, GNT, it says a good wife is her husband's pride and joy, but a wife who brings shame on her husband is like a cancer in his bones, man. And so that a that will aid in the destruction of that man. 
But then you look at it in a spiritual uh, essence. Are we not known as the, as the Lord's woman? So when we're in our uh, in our right state of mind, then we're we're uh, glorifying Yahweh by Shemuel Shai, man. But since we have been taking on the adulterous ways of Babylon, man, we disgrace the Lord. When you see our people out here living out this whorish lifestyle, living out uh, being a thug, a pimp, a gangster, whatever, whatever lifestyle of wickedness Jake chooses to be in, man, you're disgracing your power. You know, uh, take a part in that, man. You know. It says first back in uh King James verse five, Proverbs twelve five. Oh, let me uh, get that for uh verse four. Um Surah chapter twenty five and verse sixteen. Speak on it. Mm -hmm. I had rather dwell with a lion and a dragon than to keep house with a wicked woman. Mm -hmm. The wickedness of a woman changeth her face and darkeneth her countenance like sackcloth. Right. And you can see that amongst these women. If you're if you you know, take a look. A good example is somebody like Beyonce. As she became more wicked, her countenance actually became darker, man. I have a picture on my phone. I can find it. But ultimately, you can see the wickedness, the demons on these people, the more and more they, you know, indulge in that lifestyle. I and mean, you see the, the black undertone around their eyes. You can just see the, their face. It looks demonic, man. Okay? But it's good to say, I'd rather dwell with a dragon and a lion than with a wicked woman, man. You know, because that woman will literally kill you slowly. The stress, you know, and all the problems you got to deal with, with, you know, dealing with that wicked woman, man. You know, go ahead. Her husband shall sit among his neighbors, and when he heareth this, shall sigh bitterly. Man, that's that stress, man. Just like, God damn, man. And I know you can imagine the dude at the crib <laughs> going go online and see your, your, uh, your wife's ass out, Googling, drooling over another nigga, you know. Like we mentioned, we mentioned off the camera, he's living out a whole uh, Boondocks episode. You know, they had that happen with Usher, you know, which is surprising. But at the end of the day, you got to imagine how the most high, when he, how he feels when you he, when he look down and see us living like this, man. That's why he, that's why he's so angry with two thirds, man. Yeah. You know? So continuing on, verse five, the thoughts of the righteous are right, but the counsel of the wicked are deceit. Mm -hmm. Right. When they have these summits, right, when they have these meetings, when they have these councils, right, it's all geared toward deception. It's all geared toward ensuing lies and furthering their treacherous hegemony. You know? Yep, that's that's a woman right there. That's a wicked woman right there. You can see the difference. You can see the demons plaguing her face. Mm hmm You know? <clears throat> we read that verse once more, Bible question. Yep. Proverbs 12 and 5. The thoughts of the righteous are right, mm -hmm. but the counsels of right. The, the thoughts of the righteous are right. Mm -hmm. According to what? According to the law, statutes, and commandments, right? When you're adhering to the law, statutes, and commandments, the Holy Spirit is dwelling within you, and therefore your, your conversation changes. That's right. Right? What manner of holy conversations ought you to be in? Mm -hmm. The conversations are upright, geared toward... Right, what sighing and crying for the abominations done in the mist, right? Speaking of a new earth, a new heaven, Ooh. the return of Yahweh Shai Hamashiach, right? The establishment of the nation of Israel, you know, being a supreme dominant nation with all the other heathen nations in subjection, right? Because you're the whole thing about coming back to these scriptures, because this is counsel that we're taking that we're uh, taking in right now when we read these uh, these precepts, man. Mm -hmm. And it said that the thoughts of the righteous are right because the ways of the Lord, as we read earlier in Deuteronomy 30 and 15, lead to life, man. So we're understanding the mind of the Lord and how he thinks towards us. You know, when we read the scriptures, and here's one of the thoughts of the Lord. Jeremiah 29 and 11. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, save the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. So if you walk... In the, in the ways of the Lord, which are his thoughts, that, that brings forth a path of peace. But when you go outside of the Lord's ways, that's when that's when you find yourself in, in uh, evil you know, situations where that word evil means bad, man. Yep. But the Lord is telling us all this because if we follow in these instructions that he's given us, that's going to lead ultimately to us gaining everlasting life, man. Yep. You know, It says back in Proverbs 12 and 5, the thoughts of the righteous are right. But the counsels of the wicked are deceit. Now, when you read this in the GNT, 
It says, honest people will treat you fairly. The wicked only want to deceive you. And that's what he set this whole system up to be, a, a, a deceiving kingdom to make it think like you're really, you know, uh, free, make you think like you're really winning. But ultimately, you're being deceived, like you're truly living because you got them, our people saying they're living their best life. You're deceived because how are you living your best life when you have cancer, when you're eating GMOs, when you're drinking polluted water, when you can't even find a decent woman? Mm -hmm. You're being deceived because this isn't life, man. This is the matrix, you know? And a quick precept, this is uh, Psalm 64 and 2. Hide me from the secret counsel of the wicked, from the insurrection of the workers of iniquity. And how do we hide? How, how are we being hid from the, uh, the, the secret counsel of the wicked? In these scriptures, all right, under the wing of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai, man, he's protecting us from all these wicked enchantments and, and, and evil devices that are keeping us from life, man. And we always gonna reiterate on that name. That's right. You know, the name of the Lord is a strong tower, and the righteous run it thin. They are safe. There you go. All right. Acts four and twelve. There, there is but one name under heaven given unto men whereby we may be saved. Mm -hmm. Right. That's the that's the inception of everything that we have here. Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. That's the basis of our moral compass. Verse six: the way the words of the wicked are to lie and wait for blood, but the mouth of the upright shall deliver them. Yep. The the the, the words of the wicked are to lie and wait for blood. Could you put it up in an NLT Bible show? Touches on that thoroughly. Just want to make some parallels to that real quick. Proverbs 12 and 6. It's Proverbs 12 and 6 in the NLT. It says, The words of the wicked are like a murderous ambush. God damn. Mm -hmm. But the words of the godly save lives. Yo, that's heavy. Right. The, the, the words of the wicked are like a murderous ambush. Right. Man. Coming full force, just trying to kill you, man. Right. And this is evident. I mean, look at the track record of the wicked. Right. Right. When they words come in, they're not coming in peace. Next thing you know, you look at a nation two, 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 five, seven, a decade uh, later, nation all fucked up. Crime skyrocketed, all manner of, of problems going on in the country and shit. And primarily looking at us, the Israelites. Right, that got ambushed with these seducing words, the lying, you know, the 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 the, the words smoother than butter, as the scriptures say. But but uh, how does it go? His his. No, I got that right here. That's okay. right. <laughs> Psalm fifty-five and twenty. He put forth his hands against such be at, as be at peace with him. Mm -hmm. He had broken his covenant. The words of his mouth are smoother than butter, mm -hmm. but war was in his heart. Right, but war was in his heart. Right. War was in his heart. Why was war in his heart? Because that was the purpose he was given. And that was also the covenant that he made with himself going back to Genesis 27. Mm -hmm. That when Isaac died, that he was going to slay his brother Jacob. And that never changed. All throughout history leading up until now, Esau's whole MO has been about killing his brother Jacob. Man. And That's we right. see that even more with this system. Because literally when you go and research why the things are being done, why the certain things that were given to our people are, it's all sitting around killing us, man. Yep. Everything. I mean, everything. Because everything that's pushed upon us, the, the actions, goes back to idolatry. The food and stuff we are, we're, we're giving, it, it, it brings uh, a slow death, you know? Literally everything you could possibly think of, I, I'd be sitting here forever trying to say everything, leads to some form of destruction for our people, man. So as it says, his words were smoother than oil, Yet they were drawn swords. This nigga, hey, trust me, I got you. You know I love you. And whole time he's saying that he got a damn knife behind his back, ready to shank your ass so he can turn around, man. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's been like that. You think because a nigga took the chains off your neck that you, you became free, but he took the chains off your neck and put them on your mind. It got worse. And that's way worse than being having your back whipped, because when your when you got your mind gone, man, that that's that's pretty much it for you, man. Yep. You know. So uh, going back, you had another point on that? Mm, thank you, going. All right, so finish it off. Read on the first here. It says, and they don't see, or uh, regular. Regular. Right, so Proverbs 12 and 7, 
The wicked are overthrown and are not, but the house of the righteous shall stand. Mm -hmm. A man shall be commended according to his wisdom, but he that is of a perverse heart shall be despised. Right. And this is a this is a complete contrary to what's esteemed here in Babylon. Could you grab uh Sirach 13 and 23? If you if you was about to grab some, you don't have to, have to grab it. Like you know, this is a flip side in Babylon. You know, Babylon, the great America, which is the land of confusion, right? They take this mindset and flip it, right? They esteem a man that has a perverse heart as being wise, right? Yeah. And a man of wisdom, right? They despise him. He said, uh, Sirach what? Sirach 13 and 23. 13 and 23. Right. Sirach 13 and 23. It says, when a rich man speaketh, every man holdeth his tongue, and look what he saith, they extol to the clouds. Right, right. They they hold in high regards what these wicked ass, perverse motherfuckers got to say. Right. Here it is. These people idolize and reverence the the, the the very mouse of pedophiles. Right. Right. Satanists. People no that Satanists. are known Satanists, people that are adverse to life and nature itself and are against Yahweh Bashim Shai. These are the people that's that's tongues are held in a high regard. They reverence them. Mm -hmm. It says, but if he but if the poor man speak. They say, what fellow is this? Mm -hmm. And if he stumble, they will help to overthrow him. Right. This is how they view the, 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 the men of the Lord. Right? They look at us as insignificant, bug the fuck out. Right? Just out of our rabbit ass minds. But that's why the book of 1 Corinthians 7 and 31 tells us what? Right? That the Lord has used the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. Oh, pardon me. That's the incorrect scripture. First Corinthians 7 and 31. That goes into how the fashion of this world passes yeah, away. I got what you're talking You got about. it coming. Yeah. First Corinthians 3, I'm sorry, verse 18. Let no man deceive himself. If any man seemeth on see if any man among you seemeth to be wise in this world, mm -hmm. let him become a fool that he may be wise. Right. Okay. Right. If you are wise according to this world, become a fool. Right? Because the wise, the wisdom of this world is not wisdom at all. Nah, scripture tell you the uh, the knowledge of wickedness is not wisdom. Mm -hmm. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with the Most High. For it is written, He taketh the wise in their own craftiness. Mm -hmm. So that's the point, being that hey, like you just said, the wisdom of this world is foolish with the Most High because it's not true wisdom. Because this world truly does not know how to uh, lead you to a uh, long everlasting life, man. Because this world has been far removed from the ways of the Most High, man. All right? So going back, Proverbs 12 and 8. It says, a man shall be commended, of course, uh, verse 9, sorry. he that is despised and hath a servant is better than he that honoreth himself and lacketh bread. A righteous man regardeth the life of his beast, but the tender mercies of the wicked are cruel. Mm -hmm. Right. Proper ruler needs to be established, man. Right? Because as the brother was going this, you want to grab that Ecclesiastes? Yeah, I got you. Right. The beast is talking of, you know, just the, the, the people, the animals, mm -hmm. right? So it, it, it really is an order, again, a moral virtue, a, a compass that gives this type of thinking. For you to actually know how to deal accordingly. Right? Got it right quick. Okay. This is uh, Ecclesiastes 3 and 18. I said in my heart concerning the estate of the son, the sons of men, that the most high might manifest them and that they might see that they themselves are beasts. Right. And that's the point, just showing forth that you know the, the, the beast there is also speaking of you know people. Mm -hmm. You know. One more just to prove that point. Okay. Uh, Job 13 and... Let's see. Sorry. Because as the brother is saying, man, we a, a righteous man can serve the life of his beast because the, the, the people that uh, 
you know, help run your kingdom, man. They they are just as important as the animals that that you use to you know plow the field and you know do everything to help you. Mm-hmm. All right. So this is Job eighteen and three. It says, "Why are we regarded as beasts, as stupid in your eyes?" Man? I mean, right, right, right. This is uh, the King James. Uh, Job eighteen and three in the King James. Wherefore are we accounted as beasts and reputed vile in your sight? So just proving the fact that we also are looked at as beasts in, in the eyes of the Lord, man. You know, so a righteous king is supposed to regard the life of all, you know, life. Okay, the people, the animals, the earth, the plants, the ocean. All these things are a vital part of your kingdom. All right. So a righteous man would take, you know, a good you know a uh, uh, thought into how to help maintain and keep that stuff in order all right knowing what needs to be done to help keep to help the things flourish man and esau edom as the scriptures tell you in job 10 that's like a, a psalms 10 in job 21 esau desires not the ways of the most high man mm-hmm. you know everything the most high says do he does the opposite man yep i got a quick precept mm-hmm. Sirach 10 and 3 an unwise king destroyeth his people that's right but through the prudence of them which are in authority, the city shall be inhabited. Through the wisdom, all right, which the wisdom teaches you when you go into the law, a part of the law, it teaches you proper conduct, you know, on, on how to handle matters yep. as far as with, with, your, with, with men, with business, how to maintain the earth. All these things are, are wisdom and counsel that we are, uh, are being shown throughout the Holy Scriptures, man. Okay, so continuing on, Proverbs 12 and 11. He that tilled his land shall be satisfied with bread, but he that followeth vain persons is void of understanding. And that's that's our people. That's two-thirds of the nation of Israel, man. You're following a vain person because Esau does not have any understanding in him. You're, you're listening to the very nigga that tells you, that the whole creation came from fucking particles banging together. Telling you that fucking people evolved from monkeys, but we still have monkeys out here to this day. Like Cat Williams said, are, are these the retarded monkeys? Why have they evolved yet, man? You know? So this is why you, you listen, you taking counsel from a man who made all his scientific discoveries off of hypothesis, man. Right. Educated guesses. Mm-hmm. Literally, his whole purpose when he came back after the Dark Ages, when he was loose for a little season, was to go out and deceive the nations. Right. That time period was known as the Age of Enlightenment, mm-hmm. which was whenever people started to, to, uh, to turn away from the Bible, which today we're in the new age of enlightenment, man. All right. Well, technology has taken off to a point to where God is no longer needed in society because technology is becoming new God. AI is mm-hmm. the new God, man. To the point they're rewriting the Bible. You know, these people are void of understanding, man, because they don't know the true ways of life, which is the Lord. Yeah. It says the wicked desire of the net of evil men, but the root of the righteous yielded fruit. Mm-hmm. The wicked is snared by the transgression of his lips, but the just shall come out of trouble. Now, could you reread verse 12 in the NLT bubble? Gotcha. Just want to see what that says. Proverbs 12 and 12 in the NLT. Thieves are jealous of each other's loose, but the godly are well rooted and bear their own fruit. Uh, let me see what it says. Uh, GNT. Can we read GNT real quick? Yeah, this better. All the wicked people, all the all that wicked people want to want to do is find evil things to do, but the righteous stand firm. Mm-hmm. But the righteous stand firm. Right? The righteous stand firm in what? Understanding that Yahweh Bashmel Shah is coming back to deliver them. That's right. Right. Knowing that we're coming into the hour of temptation, that Yahweh Bashmel Shah is going to be with us, man. Mm-hmm. Right. We're leaning upon the Holy One of Israel, as it tells us in Isaiah the tenth chapter. Right. You know, so we've completely changed our thinking to suit the moral compass that we have. Right. But you see what's taking place. These these wicked people, they're having to, to, to try to tap into more and more wickedness to stay in the power seat, man. 
But yeah, how about Shimmy Al Rashad? Just telling us, look, we're gonna we're we're gonna uh, pretty much overtake the wicked. We just gotta stay firm in the belief that yeah, how about Shimmy Al Rashad is gonna uh, it's gonna uh, pretty much exalt us, man. You know, it says back in the King James verse thirteen, the wicked snared the wicked is snared by the transgression of the lips, but the just shall come out of trouble. A man shall be satisfied with good by the fruit of his mouth. And the recompense of a man's hands shall be rendered unto him. Mm -hmm. The way of a fool is right in his own eyes, but he that hearkeneth unto counsel is wise. Yeah, precept. Mm -hmm. Proverbs 14 and 12. There is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Mm. You know, and that's straightforward, man. Right, there's things that people do that they believe to be right within their heart of hearts, right? But the scriptures tell you that the heart is deceitful above all. I had it right here. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> Jeremiah 17 and 9. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Mm -hmm. I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins and even give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. Mm -hmm. Now, when you go in the New Testament, I think that's in uh, Galatians six and seven where it tells you that uh read what you sow you read what you sow right because if you're going to sow to the flesh you're going to sow or you're going to reap corruption but if you sow unto uh reap unto, if you sow unto life you shall reap you know the benefits of the spirit man so this is why it's imperative for you to get the right counsel which the true counsel you should be looking towards is the counsel of your how shot which has been given in this book and the lord has set up men on the planet to give you the right understanding on how to perceive this wisdom this instruction that has been given unto you man the correct way yep. proper counsel that's right the counsel that you need it may not come in the fashion that most of the world would think would come exactly right just like how yahweh shai came yahweh shai came on a mule everybody oh. in israel thinking that oh shit how shai gonna come back majestically He's coming back majestically now. Yeah. But when he first came on the scene, when he was when he was rejected by the masses of the people, mm -hmm. he came very low. Yeah, that's even like with King David. King David wasn't looked upon as being the next king of Israel. Right. When Samuel came to go find, you know, who was going to succeed Saul, he seen his brother's big buff, you know, Jake. He's like, it's got to be one of these men. And the Lord told him, like, look, not on his conscience, but on, on his spirit. And that's that's how you gotta that's how you properly judge today, all right, with the spirit of discernment. Try the spirit by the spirit, man. Mm -hmm. All right, you you listen to what, what is being said, decipher it through the scriptures, and, and that'll let you know if that man is telling you the truth or not, man. Okay, yeah. It says a fool's wrath is presently known, but a prudent man covers shame. He that speaketh truth for it's like he that speaketh truth show for righteousness. A false witness deceit. And yeah. that's what Esau is. Esau is that false witness, man. The accuser of our brother. Bro, what truly has he showed forth that has benefited mankind? We always set that question out and nobody can give an answer to. What benefit has Esau truly brought to mankind? You have some people be like, well, he gave us technology, but his technology has made people stupid. Smart technology has dumbed down the masses. So even the technology that you have is based in white supremacy. Yeah. It's literally, it's literally, it's literal articles that talk about that. The AI. Mm -hmm. The AI is racist. <laughs> Yo, the AI literally is racist, man. So that goes to show you, like the bro just said, man, everything is, is toted towards Edomite supremacy, man. You know? So it says, uh, he that speaketh truth show for righteousness, and that's what you're seeing from the men of the Lord, starting with the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, man. Okay, it says, But a prudent man, uh, fuck it, uh, but a false witness deceit. There is that, there is that speaking, there is that speaketh like a piercing of a sword, but the tongue of the wise is held. It says thoughtless words can be wound, can can wound as deeply as any sword, but wisely spoken words can heal. Mm -hmm. Hey, the scriptures speak about that. 
right? Proverbs 18 and 21, right? Life and death are in the power of the tongue. Exactly. You know? So with that understanding, what are we doing as men of the Lord? Right. Right? Isaiah 58 and 1, if I'm going to grab that real quick. Kind. Because the word that we're speaking to our people, we're breathing life back into them, man. The word that it, it, it spoke. Look, look what has been told to you throughout history. You told us that we're we're we we're monkeys, that we're stupid, all right. That that we're we we have no soul, that we're worthless, that we're black. We're black is a, a connotation that that attributes to death. You know all these negative words that that you that you uh that you hear correlated with with so called black Latino and Native Americans, man. That shows you why you need the words of the Lord because he brings life back into you, man. You got it. Isaiah 58 and 1, cry aloud, spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet, and show my people their transgression and the house of Jacob their sins. Yep. You know, and that's us breathing them, you know, through the Holy Spirit, breathing that life, telling our people, look, you're going the wrong way, bro. You got to stop with that shit. Mm. You know, because we were all in that path of darkness, right? But, you know, the Lord has set up men to give us that understanding through his Holy Spirit, right? To show us the proper way, right? To show us the moral virtues, the compass. Yep. Right? Because at that point in time, my compass was all fucked up. We going north, south, east, everywhere. Hey, he's gonna put that on compass, man. <laughs> I'm gonna start working. I got a precept for you. This yeah. is Isaiah 30 and 20. And though the Lord give you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction, Yet shall ye yet shall not thy teachers be removed into a corner anymore. All right, and that's the restoration of our people, man. All right? Them having the teachers to truly guide them through the Holy Spirit, starting with our head, elders and apostles of Great Millstone, mm -hmm. their elders mm -hmm. that came before them that they reverence to this day, right? And the bishops and men on down today that are pushing forth this truth, man. That's right. Right? That restoration, that health that we that we we came out, we saw the, the men of the Lord out there teaching and the, the spirit just lashed to us, man. Mm -hmm. But thine eyes shall see thy teachers, and thine ear, thy ear shall hear a word behind thee, saying, This is the way, walk ye in it, when you turn to the right hand and when you turn to the left. And that's what we saw when we when we uh that's what we experienced when we saw the videos or we came across the camps, okay. Because we're walking the wrong way. That's why scripture say you heard a word from behind thee. Because you was walking in the wrong direction. And that word that look, this is the way. This is that way that leads into eternal life, man. That's why the beautiful part about this uh, you know, this this Proverbs 12 is that that first verse once again, it says, Whoso loveth instruction, love him not. So now we're given, we've been given the instructions on how to turn back into the Lord. The true instruction, because the world tell you. You can you can come as you are when it comes to worshiping the Lord, which is false. That's not that's not uh that's not a doctrine that's helpful because come as you are is just a new age way of saying do as thou wilt. That's right. You know, so the, the Lord has a proper way of how you're supposed to worship him, right? Like it tells you in St. John the fourth chapter, okay. We're in the time to where the true people of the Lord are gonna worship the, 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 the Heavenly Father and His Son in spirit and in truth, man. Okay, so going back, Proverbs 12 and uh, 19. The lip of truth shall be established forever, but a lying tongue is but for a moment. Mm -hmm. Let me read a second and six. Kind. I'm going to read this in the NLT. It says, a, a lie has a short life, but truth lives on forever. And that's what we're seeing taking place, man. Hey, the lies... Are being cast down like it tells you in uh what's that second corinthians 10 i believe or first corinthians 10 the uh the weapons all warfare not carnal but mighty through the uh the power of the lord pulling down the strongholds all right cast down every imagination okay all the lies are being exposed because like i said the lie can only be told for so long before the truth starts to come out and that and that you know it pretty much you know exposes that you know something's off about that and then and eventually the truth is going to uh come back out okay they tried to cover up this truth they tried like you recorded earlier in psalm 83 come together you know and pretty much take israel out of the earth 
but the spirit of the Lord doesn't want Israel out of the earth because the, the, the Israelites are the Lord's representation while we're here on earth, man. That's right. That's our purpose, to worship Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shah, to fear the Lord and to keep his commandments. That's the whole duty of man as an Israelite man, woman and child, man. Okay? Let me get that. Second Ezra chapter 6 and verse 27. For evil shall be put out and deceit shall be quenched. As for faith, it shall flourish. Corruption shall be overcome. Mm -hmm. And the truth, which has been so long without fruit, shall be declared. And that's what is taking place, man. Evil is being put out. Deception is being quenched. Yep. And faith, all right, which have been, you know, without root, is being established back in the earth, man. The Lord is giving us back hope, okay? And the truth, all right, it, it is overflowing the lie that Esau has put throughout the earth, man. He can't stop this truth from coming out, man. So everything is being exposed now, man, you know? So continuing back on, Proverbs 12 and 20. Deceit is in the heart of them that imagine evil, but the counselors of peace is joy. There shall no evil befall, like there shall no evil happen to the just, but the wicked shall be filled with mischief. Yep, when we think about the times we're in right now, yeah. right? Where Yahweh Bashim Shai is preparing to judge the wicked, right? The heathen, right? As well as two thirds of the nation of Israel. But there is a remnant of the nation of Israel that is going to be preserved from the said perils, from the destruction of America. From the judgment, yeah, I could. It, it's so many promises the Lord made, man. The yep. main one, I always think of is uh, Isaiah forty-one and fourteen. The Lord says, "Fear not, thy one Jacob, for I am with thee." You know, so the, if the Lord is with us, then we don't got to worry about what's going to happen. It's going to be against us, exactly. It's a quick precept. Mm -hmm. Revelation eighteen and four, and I heard another voice from heaven saying, "Come out of her, my people." That ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. Hmm. Right? And that's what the Lord, Yahweh Shai, is literally going to tell the elect of Israel. Right? And that's that preservation that we're reading. Yeah. Right? And it all it all stems to adherence to the moral the moral virtues, the moral compass, right? That's guiding your steps to get you to this point. To where you're able to not be held accountable wow. for your sins and transgressions that you committed that you've committed in your past as well as in the present this wisdom is the is the, the uh spiritual guidance to get to that point mm -hmm. that's that's the goal that we all want to get to is to be in uh beamed up in those chariots when the lord brings the destruction of babylon the great man yep. so this these scriptures are literally paving out the roadmap that you need to go on to that they make to help you make it to the kingdom, man. To help you make it to salvation. All right. So it says, verse 21, there shall no evil happen to the just, but the wicked shall be filled with mischief. And that's what's going to befall all you wicked people out here, man. The imaginations of the Lord. The warning was given out. It's a uh this was a terrible thing to fall into the hands of the living power. So it says, the wicked shall be filled with mischief, man. So the Lord has all type of crazy ass judgments awaiting all you wicked people out here, man. Right. Because you don't want to repent. Lying lips are an abomination to the Lord, but they that deal truly are his delight. A prudent man concealeth knowledge, but the heart of fools proclaimeth foolishness. Mm -hmm. The hand of the diligent shall bear rule, but the slothful shall be under tribute. Mm -hmm. That's the hands of the diligent, right? The righteous. Man. shall bear rule who is going to bear rule in this upcoming kingdom the israelites. israelites and it's not going to be a kingdom that's going to transition its power to another rulership after no nope. this is going to be an everlasting dominion why because it's going to be established in righteousness perfection right no israelite is going to sin nope once we enter into this new covenant no israelite is going to be like I don't know the Lord. Who, 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 what you talking about? None of that, man. No, everybody's going to die. How the fuck that's going to work? <laughs> Yo. <laughs> Yo, you ain't going to have no choice to, but to get into, into subjection, man. You know? A mm -hmm. uh, quick one to add to you. This is Sirach chapter 10, verse 4. 
the power of the earth is in the hand of the Lord, mm -hmm. and in due time he will set over it one that is profitable. In due time. And that time is due. It's near. You know, you brothers and sisters that are keeping your, your, your eyes on the prize, don't lose sight. Mm -hmm. Right? Because in due time, we shall reap. Because what are we truly doing? All you brothers and sisters that's out here fighting for your how about Chanel Shah? We're, we're, we're staying diligent to the fact that we want to see a righteous world. Because here we have no continuing city, but we seek one to come, man. A city that dwells in righteousness, man. All right? Yep. So it says, you want to speak on the slothful part? Too? Yeah. It says, the hand of the diligent shall bear rule, but the slothful shall be under tribute. Right, but the slothful shall be under tribute. Now, when you look into the sword right here for slothful, it's deceitful. Mm. Right? Who was the deceitful? The Edomites. Right? They will be tribute, as it tells us in Genesis, the 25th chapter, and the 23rd verse. We don't got to grab it. Right? But it goes into how the elder shall serve the younger. Yep. Okay. Esau is not meant to be in a position of rulership. Right. We keep reiterating it to these damn Edomites that listen to the live stream. Right. You're not meant to be a ruler. You cut it him. out. You're not him. You ain't got it, man. If you're good at anything, it's to fuck up shit. <laughs> and that's not the type of person that should be in a position of authority, man. Hell no, nah, man. Because your state, your 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 position of rulership and authority that you begged and cried to our forefather Isaac for, you got it, and you did a terrible job. You fumbled the pack badly. Because look at the world under your rulership, man. Look at the people under your. Everything is dying. We could talk about you know everybody's full of shit, you know people wicked, but. The end result is everything's dying, man. If this man were to be continued to allow to, uh, if he was allowed to continue to rule, there would be no life on Earth anymore. All these futuristic movies you see, where mankind had to go to a different planet or live in space, that is the point that this is leading up to. The Most High would allow this man to continue on. This is why it said that if he coming back, if we come back not to deliver the elect, well, he paraphrased, there will be no flesh to be saved, man. Mm -hmm. Matthew 24, 22. This nigga got to fucking go. All right? He needs to be kicked off the throne, man. Yep. Spartan style. Verse 25. Uh, heaviness is in the heart of a man. It's like a heaviness in the heart of a man make it, make it, it stoop. But a good word make it be glad. Mm -hmm. And that's why our people have to turn from America, man. They got to turn from Babylon, man. Because... There's nothing but this place uh, gives you is heaviness, man. The word America in itself goes back to uh, bitter. And when you when you can constantly, you know, immerse yourself in uh, in heaviness, that that can be attributed to st uh, stress, which is the number one killer, especially among men. All right. So it says, but a good word make it be glad because this word gave us hope again. Let's say hope defer make a man sick, roughly paraphrasing. All right. So what really gave us hope again is coming to the scriptures and, and seeing things like how the Lord, Yahweh Shah is coming back for us. All right. How this place Babylon is not going to be able to rule forever, man. How this, this nigga Esau is about to get put in chains, man. These are things that give us hope. Because oh. if we didn't, if we didn't know that that was coming, man, who knows how we'd be in the world, man. You see how these people are? They're, they they have no hope. They just go with the shit. They just here to be here, man. Like that that Tupac and Biggie song. They just live in the die, man. Oh. It says, the righteous is more excellent than his neighbor, but the way of the wicked seduces them. And that's what we see with Esau, man. Okay? He knows that we're better than him in every way. But because he's been able to prosper in his wickedness, that looks sexy to Jake because Jake wants to Jake wants to get out of the curses, man. Jake yeah. wants to live a comfortable life, man. Jake wants to he wants to live a, a life that's worth talking about to be remembered. That's why when you hear these celebrities, all they all they talk about is their legacy, you know, having their legacy continue to live on after they're gone. The only way that's gonna truly happen is, is in the kingdom, because we're never gonna die. But here in Babylon, everything's gonna pass away, man. Okay. So Esau tells you that if you want to live forever, 
you gotta sell your soul to him. All right. And whatever works that you commit, he'll he, he said he'll preserve it. That's a lie. Right. The slothful man roasted not that which he took in hunting, but the stuff, the substance of a diligent man is precious. In the way of righteousness is life, and in the pathway thereof there is no death. Mm -hmm. right, and that's what Moses told our people, right? In Deuteronomy 30 and 19. Mm -hmm. I said before thee this day, life and death. Choose life, right? And what is life? Adherence to the law, statutes, and commandments, man. Life is the most high, honestly. Yeah. But we, we're supposed to be an extension of the most high. So when we went away and wanted to be like Esau, mm -hmm. be like, you know, the other nations, that's when we died. Right. Spiritually. It's sin. Proverbs 12 and 16, or 21 and 16. He that wandered out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. That's right. So if you truly want to live, you got to come back unto your how about Shemiah was shot because righteousness equals to life. When you read this in the GNT verse 28, righteousness is the road to life. Wickedness is the road to death. And this is one more, Proverbs 8 and 36. But he that sinned against me, what sin? Transgression of the law, going against the ways of Yahweh by Shem Shah. But he that sinned against me, wrong of his own soul. You're, you're not hurting the Lord, you're hurting yourself. <laughs> These niggas think they're doing the most high of this service because they're openly, you know, doing wrong. And they look like right. Boosie. When Boosie was like, man, God himself can come down and tell me to put down the poor. He, he, threw, he threw the most on a bird. Now look at this nigga. Okay, it says, all they that hate me love death. And that's what you're going to receive, man, as we quoted earlier. All right, you're going to reap. You uh, you sow death, that's what you're going to reap, man. But if you sow into righteousness, you shall reap life everlasting, man. And that's what we tell our people to do. So this this chapter is a, a, a good way to exemplify the correlation between right and wrong, man. What happens to the righteous and what happens to the wicked, man, you know? Yeah. That's all I got. You got anything? Hey, so Lord willing, this was an edifying lesson. Your spirit, power, and mercy of Yahweh, by Shemel Shai. We're going to close out by giving all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, by Hashem, Shai, by Hashem, Mokakwadash. Double honors to the apostles, the others, a great millstone that taught us the truth and rule well. Peace, blessings, and mercy to the house of David, Abba Yaf, Dabba Dali, for the elect. To you, we say Shalom. 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 Shalom.